uh, in the last lecture we discussed about the uh, frequency domain solution of the single and multi degree of freedom system and uh, in that we uh, discussed about the in obtaining the frequency contents of the ground motion and uh, with the help of that frequency content of the ground motion uh, we solve the problem uh, in frequency domain and uh, obtain the frequency contents of the response and then uh, inverse Fourier transform it to obtain the time history analysis. For the multi degree of freedom system uh, we require the R matrix whereas for the single point excitation system we require uh, I matrix or I vector whatever be the case. Now here is an example problem uh, which illustrates uh, how we can obtain the response uh, of a multi degree of freedom system uh, using both time domain and frequency domain. In a uh, multi degree of freedom system uh, for example in this frame we have three uh, ground uh, accelerations and uh, these three ground accelerations uh, are different uh, although the same earthquake wave is passing uh, through all the three supports but because of the time delay that has been assumed uh, uh, the, the excitations at the three supports would be different. So, in order to understand that uh, we, we take 30 seconds duration of the ground motion and which is uh, travelling when it uh, arrives here at this particular point then the ground motion at this point would be 0 and uh, next here also it will be 0. When 5 seconds of ground motion has passed through this particular point then we get the uh, ground motion over here and at that point of time ground motion still at this point is 0. When 10 seconds of ground motion have passed through this point then uh, the we get the ground motion here as well. So, as a result of that the excitation caused by the same travelling wave of ground motion is different at these three different supports and we can obtain this uh, by the following considerations from the 30 seconds of record of ground motion that is available to us. The last 10 second of record have 0 values for the first support that means when all the 30 seconds uh, have passed through this point uh, then, uh, then we have the next 10 seconds of the time history of excitation would be 0. The in this case the first 5 seconds and the last 5 seconds have 0 values and in between we have got the 30 seconds of the uh, ground motion and for the last support we will have the first 10 seconds we will have 0 values rest of the 30 seconds we will have uh, non zero values. As a result of that effective total duration of ground motion is taken as 40 seconds and that is how uh, the three different records of excitations differ uh, on a, a scale of measurement of 40 seconds. Now, with these three ground motion distinct three ground motions uh, we 
write down the equation of motion for the system. This has two non support degrees of freedom and the support degrees of freedom are 3 and they are shown over here that is uh, the uh, these are the 3 ground accelerations and the R matrix we computed before as 1 third 1 1 1 1 1 1. So, for this particular uh, problem uh, we had seen before that the uh, participation of the ground motions in creating responses at the uh, two non support degrees of freedom were equal and was equal to one third, one third, one third. So, this was of course, for, a, for this problem for other problems uh, it may not be like that that is what you have seen before the R, R matrix uh, could be different uh, for different kinds of structures and it is to be obtained uh, from um, the matrix condensation relationship. Now, with this particular equation uh, now we put on the values of x double dot g 1, x double dot g 2 and x double dot g 3 in time uh, from the different records that we have uh, obtained and uh, these records are used for solving the problem uh, in time domain using numerous beta method. And when you use the numerous beta method uh, using direct integration technique in the recursive form we require the C matrix and the C matrix is obtained with the help of these two coefficients alpha and beta. And this is the F n matrix of the numerous beta method and this is the H n matrix for the uh, numerous beta method. The initial condition that was used uh, is equal to 0 velocity and 0 displacement. With the help of that uh, we you know, went for the recursive uh, equation uh, solution of the recursive equation to obtain the response of the system. Uh, if in order to remind you what is the form of the recursive equation let us have a look at the recursive equation. So, that yeah this was the recursive equation that we use for numerous beta method. So, this is F n matrix and this is the H n matrix. So, uh, plugging in the different values that we use in the solution of the problem uh, we get the solution and uh, we get relative displacement velocity and acceleration. The displacements at u 1 and u 2 that is the two non support degrees of freedom uh, the time histories of that are shown over here. It can be seen that although the 30 second is the duration of the earthquake, but the excitation duration was effectively 40 seconds and therefore, the response that we get at u 1 and u 2 are uh, extends beyond 30 second and uh, it almost goes to 40 second of course, in this part the responses are very very small. Next we solve the, the pitch roof portal frame and uh, here if you recall the in the pitch roof portal frame we had uh, the degrees of freedom uh, one in the horizontal direction and other at the crown in the vertical direction these were the two degrees of freedom and uh, for that we assume uh, the 5 uh, second time delay between the two supports. Uh, by solving the eigenvalue problem we get the frequency as omega 1 and omega 2 as these values and from that we computed alpha and beta as that and del delta t was taken as 0 0.02. And this is how we uh, obtain the R matrix if you recall that is we give a unit displacement over here 
and find out what is the uh, forces developed here and here that gives the uh, stress uh, for, uh, stiffness matrix and uh, from that one can obtain the value of the uh, displacements caused at these points uh, due to the unit displacement. Similarly, if we give a unit displacement over here, one can find out what is the vertical displacement here and what is the horizontal displacement over here and they constitute the R matrix that is uh, what we had shown and for this example when you are working out the R matrix for different structures. And uh, the degrees of freedom, let me repeat again is the horizontal degree of freedom here 1 and the other horizontal vertical degree of freedom over here, these are the 4 and 5. So, uh, we calculated the mass matrix, this calculation was shown, how do we calculate this mass matrix for the pitch to portal frame? This is the stiffness matrix, condensed stiffness matrix corresponding to the two translational degrees of freedom and this is the R matrix that we obtained for uh, the two degrees of freedom again. So, uh, now by writing down the equation as m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x is equal to minus m r into x double dot g uh, with the uh, using that we obtain the response of the system. Uh, but uh, before that, uh, let me tell you that in this case, although the duration of ground motion on um, earthquake record is 30 second, but the duration of excitation at the two supports are taken as 35 seconds because there is a 5 second of time delay between the two support that is what uh, is assumed. Uh, therefore, uh, in the first uh, case, uh, there will be the first 30 seconds will be non-zero values and the end 5 seconds will be zero values. For the second support, the you know, first 5 seconds will have zero values and the next 30 seconds will have non-zero values. That is how we construct the 35 seconds of excitation for the two supports and we use these two excitations and obtain the values. Now, in this problem, uh, the, it was uh, solved for two cases. In one case, we considered a time delay and in another case, we obtain that there, we assume that the, there is no time delay between the two supports. So, this is the result shown for the uh, without time delay case. Uh, that is, uh, in both the supports, we had the same ground motion of 30 seconds and we continued the integration uh, till 35 second. Uh, so, after 30 second, uh, the responses that we see is due to the free vibration of the problem. And uh, the U 1 that are that uh, rather the degree of freedom 4 that is the horizontal degree of freedom, we see that uh, the ground uh, displacement or the displacement of the uh, response is about 0 0.075, whereas uh, the vertical response at degree 5 uh, that is of the order of 2 to the power 10 minus 3. It is expected because since the ground motion is in the horizontal direction, therefore, uh, the vertical uh, response of the structure uh, would not be uh, very uh, high and therefore, we get a low value. Uh, this is the scenario when we have got uh, the time delay effect considered uh, in the analysis and we see that the uh, there is a difference of course, uh, between this case and the previous case that is in the previous case we had 0 0.075 almost at the maximum value. Here the maximum value it goes up to 0 0.048 or so. So, we see that there is a uh, with time delay the response is reduced that is expected whenever there is not a perfect correlation of the ground motion between the two supports the responses at least the displacement responses generally is decreased. And, uh, 
but the important thing is that we see that the vertical uh, in the vertical degree of uh, motion the responses has increased that has uh, become nearly equal to 4 into 10 to the power minus 3 where in the previous case the it was uh, almost near 2 into 10 to the power minus 3. So, uh, we see that the horizontal in the horizontal direction the response of the structure is decreased due to uh, the time delay effect whereas, in the vertical direction uh, in which the ground motion is not acting. So, in that vertical direction the response of the structure is increased. Next uh, let us come to the state space direct analysis and uh, we have written down the equation of the state space uh, before and uh, in that we have an A matrix and uh, F matrix and the form is equal to Z dot is equal to A Z plus F if you recall where A is a matrix Z is the state of the system consisting of x and x dot that is a displacement and velocity. Now, here uh, this is for the single point excitation system this is uh, not R this should be I that is influence coefficient vector and uh, this is uh, for the multi point excitation system uh, this becomes R, R into x double dot G that becomes the force and the, in the first part that means, uh, this uh, vector is of size 2 n if it is uh, n degree of freedom then the vector will be of size 2 n. So, first n values will be 0 and the last n values will have minus r minus i into x double dot g over here and here it will be minus r into x double dot g. And uh, how we construct r into x double dot g that you have explained in the previous problem. Uh, so, uh, we can solve the problem uh, for the, uh, the system uh, in time domain as well as in frequency domain and in the time domain one can solve the problem uh, in using the uh, Neumars beta method uh, or or Duhamel integration for a single degree of freedom system, but when we solve the same problem uh, in uh, uh, for multi degree of freedom system generally we are not able to solve the problem using Duhamel integration. So, there is a problem and therefore, we uh, generally do not try to solve the problem using Duhamel integration uh, for multi degree of freedom system. Uh, when we try to solve uh, it in the state space form. So, in that case we uh, generally use uh, some other integration scheme than the Duhamel integration. Uh, this problem uh, in the state space can also be solved in frequency domain and uh, in the frequency domain uh, what we do is that we try to find out the H uh, matrix that is the frequency uh, frequency response function of the system. So, let me first clarify this uh, say this is the equation z dot is equal to a z plus f g uh, and we say that we are able to Fourier synthesize um, this f g which is described in time mind do f g is a vector and uh, the top values are 0 and the last values have got non 0 values corresponding to the time history. Uh, then this uh, f g t can be Fourier synthesized and can be written in this form f g i omega into e to the power i omega t f g i omega can be easily obtained from using the f f t algorithm that we discussed before. Now, if the excitation is of this form then it is reasonable to assume that the steady state solution of the system would be also of this form z 
uh, will be equal to j di omega into e to the power i omega t. Now, if we substitute this into this equation that is uh, we differentiate uh, this once then the differentiated form will be equal to this capital I cap omega z i omega e to the power i omega t where the I cap is nothing but a matrix with all diagonals at imaginary uh, well, uh, imaginary quantity i i i and the non um, diagonal components are all 0. So, this is the definition of your i cap with omega multiplied by j di omega into i e to the power i omega t. So, that becomes the z dot and in the case of z we simply substitute this value. So, we have got a uh, multiplied by z i omega e to the power i omega t and for f g uh, we write down the f f t of uh, f g. Then if I take this onto the left hand side then we get this particular uh, matrix ca i cap omega minus a into j, j i omega that becomes equal to f g i omega because e to the power i omega t cancels from both sides. And then one can write down for a particular frequency say a j th frequency uh, if we, we can write down j j i omega to be is equal to i cap omega minus a inverse of that into f g omega and this is what is called a j i omega capital H j i omega for the j th frequency. And uh, f g i omega can be obtained from the uh, f t that I told before and how we get uh, the individual components or the elements of this vector when we have the R matrix that we had discussed before that means the one element typically one element of this vector would be of the form of R 1 1 x double dot g 1 plus R 1 2 uh, into x double dot g 2 and so on that is that will be the one uh, element and in time one can compute this and can get a particular value uh, in time. And that is how we can have all the uh, elements values of the elements at every instant of time t that we feed in the f f t. So, uh, we have to now uh, carry out f f t uh, for the n number of time histories because here we will uh, corresponding to all n degrees of freedom we will have one excitation. So, we will have n time histories which are uh, inputted into the f f t algorithm to find out the vector of f g i omega. Now, with this uh, background, so for the jth uh, response quantity in frequency domain, uh, we can write down uh, this relationship and h j i omega is defined like this that is what we explained before. And then once we get the value of j j i omega then for different values of omega uh, we obtain this j uh, j till the Nyquist frequency or the cutoff frequency. And then after that uh, we add on the complex conjugate values uh, that is again what we discussed before and that entire uh, values of or the values of the j j omega at a interval of delta omega. Uh, so, all the values including the com complex conjugate values that are given in I f f t and I f f t gives the value of j t. And the j t contains not only the displacement, but also x, uh, velocity as well. So, that is how one can solve uh, the problem uh, in state space in uh, frequency domain. So, now we look into another example uh, in which there is a pipeline 
and in this this pipeline is uh, lying on the uh, ground the resistance provided by the ground is represented by the springs over here and the damping provided by the soil that is shown here as a dashboard. So, at these three supports uh, we provide the equivalent spring and dashboards uh, for the soil and these are the masses which are lumped at these three uh, points and uh, we have got three degrees of freedom uh, in the vertical direction 1, 2 and 3 and a rotation uh, here. So, what we do first is that uh, we condense this the rotational degree of freedom we condense out and then have only a 3 by 3 matrix corresponding to this you know, vertical uh, 3 degrees of freedom uh, with the these values which are specified over here. Next week and uh, obtain the, uh, this is the k matrix which is obtained this is the uh, c matrix uh, which is obtained using uh, assuming it to be a uh, classically damped system and in which the values of alpha and beta are these. So, with these values uh, the C matrix is generated. Uh, then we form the A matrix and this becomes the uh, FG matrix and uh, since we assume uh, that the ground motions at these uh, three supports they are same that means there is no or time lag between them uh, that is why we have 1 1 1 over here yeah, this is minus 1 1 1 uh, that is the last three values uh, are uh, uh, this and the top three values of course, will be 0. Then uh, we uh, Fourier synthesize these Fg and once we Fourier synthesize uh, this Fg, then uh, one can obtain the values of the uh, responses of the three uh, displacements in frequency domain uh, that is j j omega and uh, using I f f t we obtain the uh, response of the three degrees of freedom in time domain. So, this is the time history of the displacements uh, for degree of freedom 1 that is shown. Uh, then we have the time history uh, of displacement at 2 and time history of displacement. Uh, uh, this is 1 and 2, they, these two are shown and this uh, result is for the uh, uh, solution. Uh, that we obtain by solving the equation not in the state space, but by solving the problem uh, in the uh, as a second order differential equation. There also we can obtain the solution in the frequency domain. So, uh, the objective of this problem was to solve um, this problem by uh, two methods that is using the frequency domain ordinary and state space solution. So, ordinary means that the solution of the second order differential equation and the state space solution uh, is the one in which uh, the Hj matrix is different than uh, the Hj small Hj matrix uh, that we obtain for the uh, second order differential equation. So, uh, and uh, the results you can see that they compare very well uh, that is the displacement of degree of freedom 1 over here has a maximum value of almost you know, 0 0.05. Uh, there you can see that again the maximum value is almost 0 0.05. So, the responses obtained by the ordinary uh, solution of the ordinary differential equation the state space equation they are uh, obtained as same. 
next if we are wanting uh, to solve the problem uh, for absolute displacement then we use a different equation and uh, the in that different equation on the left hand side of the equation you have all the terms written in terms of the total displacement that is total displacement total velocity and total acceleration on the right hand side uh, instead of the acceleration we require the knowledge of displacement and the velocity uh, that we discussed before and generally we assume that the csg that is the coupling term in the damping matrix they are uh, generally set to 0 because that is very small and uh, in most cases we only consider pg to be equal to minus ksg into xg. So, by knowing not the ground acceleration, but the ground displacement one can obtain the value of, of pg vector over here. And once we uh, know the uh, pg vector, then we can solve the problem uh, either as a second order differential equation or uh, in the state space and we can use uh, uh, whatever method we want that is we can solve it in, in time domain or in the frequency domain. Now we come to what is known as the modal analysis uh, which is very popular uh, in the dynamics. Uh, in the beginning of the multi degree freedom system uh, I mentioned that uh, the solution for the multi degree freedom system can be obtained uh, for uh, two kinds of excitation one is for the single point excitation other for the multi point excitation. Again for both types of excitations we have a direct solution and the uh, solution obtained by modal analysis. Uh, when we use the direct solution then we require uh, the C matrix to be defined and for defining the C matrix uh, we assume that the uh, damping matrix is, a, is of classical uh, nature or we say that the, it is a classically damped system and when we assume the it to be a classically damped system then C matrix is written and to be is equal to alpha times m plus beta times k where alpha and beta values are obtained for uh, using the two frequencies of the system generally the first two frequencies are considered to obtain the values of alpha and beta. So, once we have the C matrix for the system uh, then one can go ahead with the direct solution either uh, solving it uh, in as a second order differential equation or by solving it uh, as a coupled of first order differential equation which is called the state space equation and one can use both time domain solution and the uh, frequency domain solution. Uh, in the time domain solution for multi degree of freedom system uh, we generally adopt numerous beta method for solving the problem. Duhamel integral uh, is somewhat uh, um, what we call uh, complex uh, if we extend it to the multi degree of freedom system. Now we uh, come to the modal analysis and uh, in this uh, analysis uh, we uh, try to take advantage of the properties of the mode shapes or undamped mode shapes of these structures. And I am sure all of you know from your the knowledge of your dynamic analysis uh, how we uh, carry out the modal analysis, but still for recapitulation uh, let me uh, try to summarize uh, what you have already uh, learnt in your dynamics for uh, uh, the modal analysis. Uh, we write down the displacement that is the x or the dynamic displacement of a multi degree of freedom system that as equal to a phi matrix that is a mode shape matrix 
multiplied by z which are known as the generalized coordinates or sometimes also known as the modal uh, coordinates. So, with this defined uh, we go to the main second order differential equation, we substitute in the uh, main equation the phi into z in place of x. So, once we do that then this becomes m into phi multiplied by z double dot the C matrix becomes C into phi into z dot and this one becomes phi k into phi into z. So, in place of x we write phi z, here in place of x dot we write phi z dot and here in place of x double dot we write down phi z double dot. Once we do that, uh, then we pre multiply by the transpose of the phi matrix and once we pre multiply by phi t then here we get a term as phi t, here we get phi t, here we get phi t and on the right hand side also we multiply it by phi t. Now, for a single point excitation system it will be i, for a multi point excitation system it will be r. Then the comes the property of this phi t m phi and phi t c phi and phi t k phi the mode shapes of the undamped system uh, obtained by solving the Eigen value problem that is k minus m, m omega square absolute value of that will be equal to 0 or in standard form it is written as a x is equal to lambda x and we give this a matrix into the um, in any standard program for Eigen values and then uh, the uh, it gives the Eigen values and Eigen vectors of matrix A. So, those Eigen values and Eigen vectors are nothing but the mode shapes and the frequencies uh, of the system. Now, the property of these Eigen vectors or the mode shapes uh, are that it is orthogonal with respect to K matrix and it is orthogonal with respect to mass matrix. Orthogonality condition means phi t k phi will lead to a diagonal matrix that is uh, will this will be having only a diagonal values as non-zero all of diagonal values will become zero. So, uh, this turns out to be a diagonal matrix. Similarly, m matrix becomes a diagonal matrix because this is also orthogonal with respect to the mass matrix. Now, if one assumes that the C matrix is proportional to the alpha times m or is proportional to mass and stiffness matrix, then one can write as C is equal to alpha into m plus beta into k. Uh, therefore, phi t C phi also will become diagonal because phi t k phi will be diagonal, phi t m phi will be diagonal. So, therefore, this phi t c phi also becomes diagonal. Now, if the left hand side of these things becomes diagonal, then we can see that the in the left hand side the equation of motion becomes uncoupled, uncoupled uh, in the sense that only you have diagonal terms over here. So, the each one of these equations are uh, independent of each other that is one can write down a equation uh, only in the form of this that is um, uh, this m bar i into z double dot i c bar i into z dot i k bar i into z i this is the ith equation and this is a single variable z i is a single variable and one can write uh, down such equation uh, which is consisting uh, of n number of equation that is i varies from 1 to n where n is the degree of freedom 
for the multi degree of freedom system. So, this is the um, basis of the modal analysis and uh, if the k bar i and m bar i that are taken and uh, we divide uh, k bar i uh, by m bar i then we get the frequency natural frequency square right that is the ith natural frequency we get like that and one can write down c bar i uh, that to, that is to be is equal to twice uh, into um, twice j i i omega i into m bar i and if we divide all through by m bar i then we land up a, in the equation uh, in a single degree of freedom equation uh, in which it is defined uh, with respect to uh, um, frequency of the mode ith mode and the damping of the ith mode. Generally we assume the constant damping for all the modes uh, therefore we do not write down uh, here xi i but we write simply xi indicating that it does not vary with modes. Then on the right hand side uh, the entire thing this is phi i t m r into x double dot g that can be written as a summation of lambda i k multiplied by x double dot g k. Now the uh, k indicates the supports that means in a multi degree of freedom system uh, if you have got s number of supports then this s number of supports uh, can be considered in the analysis and these uh, at these n supports we have different ground accelerations that is represented by x double dot g k k stands for the, nu the number of the support. So, this x double dot g k varies from support to support and lambda i k is a quantity which also varies from support to support. So, here we have got lambda i k defined as phi i t multiplied by m into r k where r k is the ith column of the r matrix. So, divided by phi i t m phi i. So, that is uh, the definition of lambda i k. So, it is support dependent uh, that is it has an index k. So, this uh, summation is done for all the supports over here and we generate a time history of the ground excitation uh, for the structure. That means for the entire structure for the ith generalized coordinate we will have only one uh, time history of excitation uh, which will be called the generalized excitation for the ith mode and there the effect of the different types of excitations at different supports will be all summed together to find out the time history of the generalized excitation at the ith uh, mode. So, uh, now we can solve this equation written in terms of the general coordinate or we call this modal equation we can solve as a uh, single degree of freedom equation either in time domain or in the frequency domain. Uh, in time domain again we have option we can use Duhamel integration or we can use Newmark beta method or, or we can use any other integration scheme. Uh, let me just try to elaborate this lambda i k. If the ground acceleration is not varying from support to support that means at all supports 
if you have got the same uh, uh, excitation on time history or the ground acceleration, then in place of R k it becomes I that is the influence coefficient vector 1 1 1 1. In that case it becomes the k it becomes independent of k and we have a unique value of lambda i defined for uh, the ith mode. So, that quantity is known as the mode participation factor uh, that uh, has been discussed I am sure in your dynamic analysis class. So, the for the single point excitation you have uh, this mode participation factor as a single quantity, but if it is a multi support excitation system then there is not a single value of the mode participation factor. This mode participation factor then becomes support dependent that means for each support uh, we have one mode participation factor defined. Obviously, if uh, S is equal to 1 that is if you have got uh, a single support excitation then uh, it uh, this generalized formulation uh, can be uh, made uh, what to call uh, made same as single point excitation system. Now, let us uh, look into the uh, example an example solved for uh, these um, multi support excitation system with uh, uh, the uh, modal analysis. So, here we take the example of the cable state bridge uh, if you recall uh, in that cable state bridge we had uh, the you know, many supports or rather four supports were there in the cable state bridge. Let me show you the diagram for that for your recapitulation. Yeah, This is a cable supported bridge that uh, we have taken up in order to obtain the R matrix and in that you can see that we have got one support, second support, third support and fourth supports. At these four supports the ground accelerations were different and the degrees of freedom that we considered were 3 degrees of freedom that is at the two top of the towers uh, or the at the at the uh, top of the two towers we have got two horizontal degrees of freedom and a vertical degrees of freedom is considered at the center of the deck. So, these were the 3 degrees of freedom dynamic degrees of freedom that we considered. So, we condensed out all the rotational degrees of freedom then we obtain a, a equation uh, of or, or we obtain an expression for the stiffness matrix and the mass matrix corresponding to these translational degrees of freedom and then the from the stiffness matrix we again take uh, took out the 3 non support degrees of freedom that is 1, 2, 3 and uh, the rest were the uh, support degrees of freedom and from there we constructed the R matrix for the system and the R matrix for the system was obtained like this. This was the R, R matrix corresponding to all the uh, 4 support degrees of freedom and the R matrix obviously was 3 by 4 because the 3 are the non support degrees of freedom. So, with this R matrix in position uh, we try to solve this problem and uh, the uh, solution for the problem yeah the solution of, for the problem uh, were obtained with the K matrix that is the for corresponding to non support degrees of freedom that was the K matrix that was obtained and the mass matrix was a diagonal mass matrix because we lamped the masses at the 3 degrees of freedom and then this was the R matrix that I had shown uh, you before 
and uh, then the omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, 3 frequencies are obtained. The phi 1 t, phi 2 t, phi 3 t that is the 3 mode traps uh, well uh, like this. And uh, then we have uh, the uh, first modal equation uh, that we can write in this particular form. Now, the you can look at the nature of the mode shape, it is interesting to see the nature of the mode shapes. So, the nature of the mode shapes is the first mode basically is such that you have uh, these are the, uh, the first two uh, degrees of freedom that is at the top of the pylons and you can see that in the top of the pylons if uh, one is moving in this direction the other moves in the this direction that is uh, you have a situation like this and with uh, the uh, at the center we have a downward upward displacement. So, the phi 2 basically were uh, such that both uh, the pylons are moving in the same direction and, and there was no uh, uh, what you call displacement at the center. And uh, this basically is again a mode shape in which the uh, both pylons moved in the opposite direction and uh, the uh, deck, uh, center of the deck moved uh, down rather than up. So, these were the three mode shapes that were obtained. So, using these three mode shapes, uh, so we write down the three modal equation and for these three modal equation these are phi i phi 1 t a m and this one will be equal to r 1 not r r 1 that multiplied by g that would give the, uh, the rho g 1. So, for this is the, uh, the, the value of the generalized uh, ground acceleration or generalized uh, excitation of the first generalized equation. And with a delta t defined as 0 0.025, uh, this thing can be in, uh, integrated. But uh, in order to obtain the values of x double dot g1, x double dot g2, and x double dot g3 and g4, for that uh, we take the uh, ground acceleration of 30 second, which is traveling, and uh, there is a 5 second of time. Uh, delay between the supports. As a result of that, you will have for the first support the 30 seconds of the record, first 30 seconds will be non zero and rest 15 second will be zero values. Similarly, for the second support, you will have first 5 seconds as zeros, then you will have got 30 second of the record and the last 10 second will be 0. So, that way we can construct the different excitations at different supports from uh, the uh, 30 second of the actual earthquake that is traveling and uh, uh, with a 5 second time delay uh, between uh, each support. So,